degree that we begin to be bound by people. But we know when God speaks through whoever he speaks through. And you begin to hear the voice of the Father. And you'll go to church where the Father is speaking. You'll find that the Father is ministering to you. You'll find that the Father begins to build something inside of your life. You see, every time that you say amen in a sense, you're accepting the Father. You're saying that's the truth. And so when we come into the place of having the Father lead us, it is no longer personalities that we say, I give myself over to Brother George, or I give myself over to some other preacher, or I give myself over to somebody else, tell me what to do. You look up and you say, Lord, you lead me, you guide me, you direct me, and all of a sudden you have a man of God say something, and you say, it's for me. You see, there's a danger. If you're going to come into fullness, if you give yourself over to somebody else, you're saying, I'm not capable. It's that mentality of being an invalid again. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And if God has to set you in order, he can do it. I want to tell you, nobody can rebuke like Jesus. Nobody, because he does it in a good way. He lets you know you're off the wall, you're weird. Cut it out. He brings you to the place where you stop it. He just says, stop it, and you all of a sudden, you know I'm through. Hallelujah. And still, he doesn't violate your manhood. He doesn't violate what he's bringing you to. He's there, and he says, cut it out. And you know in that moment, i got to cut it out. But you don't become less. You become more. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. <laughs> What rules your life is the spirit of truth. God begins to equip you. You begin to sense that you make things happen. And I'm going to prophesy tonight that there's those of you that are going to take a hold of different things that God has for you. And whatever it is in the church, in business, in marriage. And you're going to know, I'm going to take this thing to victory. I'm going to learn through this situation. I'm not going to hand it back and say it doesn't work. I'm going to find out why it doesn't work. I'm going to find out what the problem is. I'm going to wait upon God. I'm going to ask and understand. I'm going to be an overcomer. Don't give up. God didn't call you to give up. He called you to understand, to learn. Go on. One of you can chase a thousand. Two of you can put 10,000 to flight. Your God is the Lord. You see, the reason that you need to be victorious, because everything that you go through, other people are going through it, but when you have victory, you can share it with somebody else. Nobody's stronger than you, and yet nobody's more threatened than you. Everything I've ever failed at, my wife has said, I told you so. I don't mean that in a bad way, but women just are cautious. You've got within you the ability to take a chance. But if you have a spirit of optimism, you also have to have a spirit of tenacity to make it work. You see, it's worth nothing if you've got the heart to take a chance. And if you fall flat on your face, all you've done is prove that you work right. And half the time when you prove that you're not right, you haven't proven that. You've proven you haven't paid the price. If you had that sense inside of you to go for it, then perhaps the real problem is that you didn't stop and count the cost. Because God says you got to stop and ask before you begin to build the tower. Can I afford to take this on? Can I afford to build it? And if you count the cost and you know that you can, God will bring you through. And you'll sense inside of you that you've come to another level of victory. God is building you. I want to talk a little bit about the sense of inferiority, men. Yeah, get you cut that down, I'm good with mechanical things. There's not much I can't 
repair if I look at it and if I get involved in it. And I've had a track record like that just today. Half the power in my office is out. And there's no schematics, there's no wiring. You don't know where those wires go to. You don't know how they ran them behind the walls and in the paneling. And so it becomes a mystery. Anything you don't get involved with is going to be a mystery. The moment you get involved with it, you're going to begin to dismantle the mystery. I began to cut off circuit breakers until I began to realize that basically it seemed like there were two circuit breakers that fed the room. I shut off one circuit breaker and all the lights went out and all the plugs but 